these are uh, just like everything else. Resumes go through trends. I used to in the early 90s, late 80s, whenever there, everybody was downsizing and it was very competitive, HR was going through a different way of trying to weed out all the competition and they used to have an area on your resume for hobbies and interests. They also used to have references available upon request. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. But we don't do that anymore. What we do now is that we create a LinkedIn page and that's where we put our references or when you apply online that's where you get to put that so there's just some things that maybe you had in the past and that worked on for you at that time but now we need to show you what employers are looking at and the first thing that you will notice the difference is that they have under the heading so you'll start off with the heading area and again, this is the same, where you still put your name, your first name, last name, phone number, email address, but how it's changed now, we need to put in a LinkedIn account. Let's check and make sure that your email address, make sure it's professional. I know that I'm working with adults, but, and I know that some names are pretty common, and so you have to be creative. If someone else is taking your Danny Smith email address, because Danny Smith may be a common name, but you still need to ha keep it strictly to something that is relevant to your first name and last name. And try and set it up in an account that you aren't using right now. I say that if you're using Yahoo right now, maybe use Google or something so that it really helps you manage your job search process. Things that we're noticing now, individuals are not necessarily putting a complete address. That's one trend that we're moving towards. We are seeing companies, Susie, you can attest to that, companies that do at least want to know what um, area that you're in. So if you live in Collin County, you can put Collin County or Dallas, but you do not need to put your street number and your street name in your heading. That's up to you. Let's move on to the profile. Used to, an old trend before, um, before we have what we're doing now, they used to have an objective line. So if your resume has an objective where it talks about objective, what would they say? That would be the hardest part, don't you think? The objective to obtain a job with the company where I can use my skills and my talents and that I can help grow the business. And everybody was saying that to where companies, they just wouldn't even read that part. Didn't mean anything. So what we do now is we set up a profile area. What you're doing in there is just a mini cover letter. It's just a way for you to tell them in two, maybe three sentences, what you can bring to them relevant to this position. We want you to take your resume and we want you to customize it for each position that you're applying for. Instead of the summary of qualifications, just go ahead and put the title, network administrator, if that's what you're applying for, go ahead and put network administrator. You could put IT professional, give yourself some sort of title. Because in HR, they'll have multiple different positions that they're trying to fill. So you need to let them know, this is the one that I'm interested in applying for. Under that, then you can list how you are that person. Take your job description, each line, especially for the first five or so, that their qualifications they're looking for. I would think that the first five would be what they really have to have, must-haves in an individual. And if you can grab their attention, and if you can show them that you meet their qualifications in that first two or three sentences, then they'll be interested in scanning the rest of your resume. Be sure and include technical words. If you're going to do soft skills, you can put soft skills in this area, but I wouldn't have only soft skills. Team player, able to work independently, go-getter. Everyone does that. Companies are hired. They're going through a search while you sleep process. They take your resume and it's put into the computer and that computer while you're asleep, while they're asleep, goes through and it looks at your qualifications and it compares it to what positions they're looking for. So if you don't have the right keywords, it's not advanced to the next step. Right? And whatever you put in that profile, you need to prove it and have that either in your training or your experience or your education. You need to be able to back that up. Technical skills. So that's where you could put your hardware, software devices, programming, any programming languages that you have. You need to have it in an area so that an employer, whenever they're looking at your resume, they don't have to hunt and peck through the whole thing. That if they need someone with these skills, that they can go straight to it. Um, and I would go ahead and put the devices 
hardware, software, put it in under technical skills or training, under your experience, list it again, okay? Maybe uh, not a great detail, but so that as it's being scanned and if it comes up that you have that information two, three, four times, then that would put you possibly up at the cost or at the top of the list to be called. Employer, whenever they're looking at your resume, they're reading it from top to bottom, from left to right. Okay, so you need to have that valuable information up towards the top in order to get their interest. If you're a career changer, it could be that possibly your current education is what an employer would find valuable about you. So you may have the education and training first. If you have experience in this field and you're just coming back and you're just looking at updating your skills and that's why you're here at Collin College, then your education is not what's important to an employer. It would be your uh, experience. So it's up to you which one goes first. There's no right or wrong answer as it relates to you. But let's go ahead and let's just talk about education right now. Let's just talk about education training. They would need to see the, your degree, the name of your degree, where you've gotten your degree, when you'll be completing, to set you apart from other individuals. Be sure if your GPA is something that you want everybody to know about that you include your GPA. You include that if you're on the deeds list, include that. If you are a member of any organizations like the National Technical Honor Society, if you are a career changer and you need to really speak and really talk um, more about your education, then you need to include any projects that you've been involved in while you've been taking classes. Usually in resumes, we don't put any pronouns. We don't put any I's and me's and Y's, but in, or I's and me's and my's. But in this area, most likely you will have to show what you did. And experience. Companies want to know, can you do the job? It's various, if you have volunteer experience, paid experience, they just want to know, have you done this in the past? Can you continue to show those skills for what you're applying for? If you have worked in a contract position, which is pretty common in IT, if you've worked in a contract position, it is better to show that you've been a consultant and list that in a group instead of showing each company that you've worked for. If you have worked in contracting and you've worked for a company, it's they like to see the companies that you've contracted for. So you don't necessarily need to put the dates. If you've worked for three companies and you worked in that for over a period of three years and it was similar tasks that you were on each assignment, then you may go ahead and list the names of the company and put that assignment in that was common for all of that. You need to show them that you have 10 years, the most current 10 years work. All right, however, maybe you had been in that industry, you stopped and you did something else, you've been in that industry and you're coming back, and so you need to show them outside of that 10 year window. Not a problem, I would highly recommend that you do that. Mm -hmm. There is no set pages, set number of pages. I can tell you that if it goes over two to three to four and five, that most likely they would just concentrate on the first two pages, all right? You need to give them enough information in order for them to make a decision whether they want to take you to the next level for an interview. Um, if it does go on to two pages, be sensitive to the fact that it needs to have your name and some contact information on both sets. It doesn't have to be a full heading, but at least to have your name and some sort of contact, maybe a phone number. So people get confused that this document, and they put everything that they've ever done on this. And it goes on for four pages. And this is a marketing tool. So what you're doing here is you're advertising yourself, you're promoting yourself, and you're just putting information on here that helps them determine, is this someone I want to interview? or or maybe not this time, maybe later. So that's what this piece of paper is about. And it takes an entirely different perspective instead of a document that lists your history.